Welcome back once again, everybody, to the Dark Forest. We're nearly at 10,000 subscribers. Realistically, about 650 subs away from gaining this short-term goal. I'm just sitting here in my chair questioning myself. How many toasted buns do I need the butter around here to get those numbers? Anyways, if you're listening in and you have yet to subscribe, do so. Get close to the fire, get comfortable, and let's get spooky. This happened to me last spring. It's not the scariest story in the world. Hell, it's probably nothing like you've ever heard before, but it's absolutely true and it's my story. I live kinda near Nashville, Tennessee. I'm in one of the smaller towns, about 30 minutes south, kinda like where that large Nissan warehouse is at. I'm around there. I was just minding my own business. I was just doing a little bit of fishing on my small fisherman boat on the J. Piercy Priest Reservoir. I was nearby the Bear Island. I was kind of in between that and the Elm Hill Recreational Area. It was a hot day. I had only caught a few fish, but I was kind of still sticking around waiting for that big one. The sun was starting to set from what I could remember, but yet it wasn't dark. I figured I had a good 15-20 minutes before I turned on the engines and went back in the port. That, and I only had a couple of beers left, so either which way, I was close to ending my day. So I just sat there sipping my brew, eating some beef jerky, just staring out in front of me facing Bear Island. There was a slight wind that had a little touch of humidity, yet it was still kind of chilly. The air was thick, and I just listened to the branches and the trees weaving through the wind. I could periodically hear the movement of fish popping up from the surface. I could hear the crickets offshore chirping away. Then, that's when I heard something out far ahead of me. It was a splash, but it was a big splash. I kind of got caught off guard and confused. I just squinted my eyes and just stared in front of me. And I swear to you, what I saw was unbelievable. Even to this day, no matter how many times I recall and tell this story to people, it's always been the same story because it's absolutely true. I was still holding my reel, but what came out of that water still to this day baffles me. Off the shore, not crawling out, but stepping out onto the sand on the edge of Bear Island was this big, black, furry, dogman creature it was walking like a man, hunched over, drenched in water. Its large, furry, pointy ears flickered the water away as it escaped the lake. It shook like a dog, letting its fur expand. This thing was some kind of a humanoid. I've never seen anything like it before, and I've been fishing out here for years. So, I just sat there, frightened in my little fishing boat, unable to move a muscle, completely freaked out at this point. All I could do is sit there and watch this beast come out of this water and just shake it off, and slow and behold, disappearing off into that island. It must have been five, maybe ten minutes before I even got the courage to turn on my boat motor. When I did... I was extremely paranoid, thinking that this beast may have witnessed me. Of course, I never saw that thing again, nor have I went back to go fishing since. The 
Zack, I sent you this story because I know that you would just tell it the way it needs to be told. This is my story that I have from a few years back when I lived in western Michigan. I was fishing off of Lake Michigan. I always headed a little farther north towards Beaver Island. And that's where this had happened. I lived in Northport, which is just a small area right off of the coast water. It's a very small village. Roughly, just a little over 500 people live here. But there's surrounding villages and towns, and cities aren't terribly too far off, so... Yeah, this was just my area, and I loved it. This happened when I was fishing, but outside of that, there's still a lot of different things to do on Beaver Island. It's not like it's uninhabited or anything. I mean, there's shops and dine-ins and takeouts, and you could go hiking out there. There's Kayak Paradise Bay. There's a lot of different things to do, including golf. I love golf. I am a retired Marine, but I still work part-time for extra cash. The cost of living is not terribly a lot of money compared to other states in Michigan, probably due to the location and weather up here, especially in the wintertime, but it's where I call home. So this happened on a Sunday. It was about 6.30 at night. It was still light out, but I knew within an hour or so, it was going to start getting dark. I just had my line out and I was just relaxing with my feet up on the board. I'm old school, but I'm not that old school. I wasn't sitting there smoking a cigar with a book in my hand. I was smoking a cigar listening to one of those audibles from Amazon.com on my cell phone. I just had the earbuds in my ear and I was just relaxing. From what I remember correctly, I was just starting Book 7 from the Land by Alaron Kong, which is a lit RPG, fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons type of book, and it's really catchy. I guess you just have to be in that kind of thing to respect it. I know what you're thinking. I was probably listening to some old-time western or The Shadow or something of that nature. Now, I do like a good, bad, and the ugly every now and then, but... I'm really into that old Dungeons and Dragons type of stuff, especially back in the 80s. Enough about my audiobook. So, I was out there on the water. The nearest boat was behind me. Yeah, there was some lights on on the island, but outside of that, it was just a peaceful evening. I wasn't even truly expecting to catch any fish. I just go out there for the peace and quiet. I'm telling you, the older you get, the more quiet and away from people you want. Don't ask me why, I just believe it comes with wisdom and old age. Anyways, I was having a great night as I try to make it out here at least once every couple of weeks. Just me, myself, and I like De La Soul. That's when I saw this. When I saw this thing on Beaver Island, I swear you not... There were some kids just playing off on the shore at the sand near the waterline. They were throwing rocks in. They couldn't have been any older than six or seven years old. They were little. And they were unaccompanied by any adults nearby from what I had witnessed. Out of the brush, out of nowhere, somewhere off to the right behind them, this big furry man thing pranced out on all fours towards them, ending and running on its back hind legs, snatching up one of the children and running back out into the woods. The other children screamed and fell and ran off to whoever that was supposed to be watching them. Yet, that one child disappeared. It all happened so incredibly fast. I just happened to glance over and I was just watching the children playing by the water. I smiled and just thought of my days as a youth. Then, all of a sudden, that big furry beast just prances out of nowhere, hops up and starts running like a man, snatching one of the kids and darting off out of nowhere. My heart was racing so incredibly hard, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, it was almost like a movie. 
I turned on my boat and went over there as quickly as I could. By the time the police arrived and the parents were there and they contacted the missing children's parents, they had already taken the children's statements and mine as well. They probably thought we were all nuts, especially me, because my story was just as what the kids said. This large, furry black beast took one of the children. Even though I was kind of far off, I still saw it all. I've had nightmares since, but I don't think they ever found that child. This story happened to me last week. I shit you not. This happened over at Sabine Lake in southern Texas. I live in a small town called Orange, which is on the border of Louisiana, just north of Port Arthur. It's a very small, green, humid, and swamp-like area, but it is what it is, right? I grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is again very green, but not really swampy like it is down here. When you're close to the border of Louisiana, that's when it's swampy and more gatoristic, if you know what I mean. The town of Orange roughly has a little over 18, maybe 19,000 people total. It's a small place where a lot of people go to go fishing and of course for hunting boar. It's year-round season out here, I'll tell you that. Those frickin' things are everywhere. And there's some good eating too if you could adjust to that wild taste in the meat. The reason why I'm bringing up the wild boar, because it has to do with the sighting that I had. You see, I was out there at the lake. I was just doing some fishing, just relaxing. Of course, I have my shotgun with me too, just in case of something's a little awkward, if you know what I mean. There's gators out here, so you have to be able to take care of yourself if harm comes your way. I know a lot of people are still freaking out about the whole social distancing and wearing masks and all that crap. You know, being born and bred in Texas, we're just built thicker. We have thicker skin and we don't, we don't believe everything that we hear on CNN, put it that much. I'm not saying that the virus isn't real because I'm sure it absolutely is, but according to what I'm reading, statistically more people die from the flu, so I could give two rats ass about the mask. You want social distancing? Sure. That's why I'm out here fishing. So I was just minding my own business, smoking a cigarette, and just enjoying the night. I've encountered plenty of gators in my time, and usually they'll just leave you alone. They're just doing their own thing, to be real. Unless you're messing with their youngins or something like that, or if you're invading their personal space, or... Hell, if it's mating season, that's the only time you're going to have any type of real danger lurking your direction. Other than that, they kind of just do their own thing, just stay out of their way. I want to say it was almost 8 o'clock. The sun was setting, and it was starting to get dark. Mind you, I grew up out here, so it being dark wasn't something that I was really afraid of. I've dealt with things in the dark plenty of times, including alligators and including wild boars. They're the least of my worries, after what I had countered that night. It was humid as all hell, as it usually is down here, year-round. The air was thick, and there was a nice breeze outside, but still, very humid and nasty. But you get used to it. All I could hear was the waves splashing on the water, the birds chirping periodically, and the grasshoppers chirping away in the fields. I was just about ready to wrap things up and head back home. I had my catchings for the evening, when all of a sudden, everything around me went completely blank. Blank like silent, like Somebody pressed mute on a remote control on your television quiet. The wind was gone. 
the water had no sound, and nothing was chirping anywhere around me. It was all utterly silent. Too silent. I just sat there in my boat rocking back and forth just questioning what in holy blazes is going on here. I looked up in the sky and the stars were so bright. The moon was glooming. It almost looked like it was full, but it wasn't. I just had the weirdest feeling in the back of my head that something was wrong, something was off. You know that feeling that you have in your gut that something's about to happen or you're being watched or you know that feeling that I'm talking about. At least, I hope you do. Well, I had that feeling that evening and it gave me a tingle down the back of my spine. Again, I just sat there and listened and watched, wondering what the hell was going on. Then all of a sudden, I heard this howl somewhere off in the distance in the brush. All I know is, right before I heard the howling of whatever the hell was out there, I heard the grumbling of something else. I wasn't just hearing one animal, I was hearing two different entities. I don't know if they were in the same area, if they were fighting, or if they were mating, I have no idea what was going on, but I heard the howl of something, and then the gargling hissing noise of something else. The curiosity was killing me, so I just again, sat there and listened for more. A couple of minutes had passed, and instead of howls, I heard growling noises. I turned on my engine and slowly headed in the direction of the sound, in the direction that I thought it was coming from at least. I thought I saw something up ahead in the darkness, so I turned off my engine and just let the boat continue to glide forward. I closed my eyes, squinting them, trying to get my eyes to adjust to the now darkness. What I saw, I swear, was just for a split couple of seconds, will forever haunt me. Over at the brush near the water, I saw this large black furry beast gnawing on something. Whatever it was gnawing on wasn't huge, but it definitely wasn't small either. The more I looked at it, the more I understood what that animal was. It looked like a smaller alligator. It was dead. That large black furry beast was gnawing on its stomach side. That must have been what I was hearing earlier, yet I couldn't figure out what that big black beast was. It blended in too well with the night, but it was hunched over like it was enjoying its meal. It used its front paws like arms as it ripped through the scales. As soon as I turned on my light and flashed it at the creature, it looked up and darted off out into the brush leaving its prey there on the mud. That night, I had no idea what I had actually witnessed. All I knew it was some kind of humanoid dog person gnawing on some baby gator. But after doing some research online, I've came to the conclusion that I had actually encountered a dogman. They do exist. Well, 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 what can I say, ladies and gents? I hope you all enjoyed the three true Dogman by the Lake encounter stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and once again, spread me like butter.